Hey, it's Jason Simpson. A uh, pretty active weather pattern over the last few weeks with lots of heavy thunderstorms. Way too much severe weather for this time of year. But what you might not realize is this is really the peak of thunderstorm season. Not severe weather season necessarily, but certainly the peak of thunderstorm season across the deep south. We get more lightning this time of year than any other. Here's what's going to happen for the next seven days around central Alabama. And this forecast is pretty well valid for neighboring states too. Mississippi, Tennessee, Florida, Georgia, Louisiana. We're, we're all going to be kind of in the same boat. Very hot, very humid, good chance of showers and thunderstorms. But toward the end of the period there, look toward Tuesday and Wednesday. Out here, notice the lack of widespread showers and thunderstorms. Temperatures that may be just a tad lower at night in the lower 70s. And afternoon highs that make it up into the lower 90s. So why is that important? Well, because I do think we're going to get into a hotter, drier pattern again. But is it going to be anything like this record heat that wasn't? And I don't know that anybody truly forecast record-breaking temperatures, but it was supposed to be some of the hottest temperature levels that we've had since going back to 2012, when 850 millibar temperatures were 23 degrees plus. That was one of the reasons that I used for going above 100 on the seven-day forecast. I have to admit it, we didn't get there. Why didn't we do it? Well, the biggest issue is the fact that the 850 temp never made it that high. In fact, uh, if we go back and look at, again, June of 2012, where we spiked up there to 24 and a half degrees C, uh, we only made it to 21.8 this time. And our highest temperature was 98 degrees. So there you have it. That's the primary reason that we did not uh, make it all the way up to that extreme 100 plus heat with 115 degree heat index. Bad enough, yeah. I mean, we had, uh, I think, six straight days of above average temperatures. When you're getting above average in July, you're getting some pretty serious heat. It can cause health problems, but th fortunately, we didn't, we didn't break any records. So where do we go from here? Well, this is a look at where some things are lining up for us. First of all, you may have never seen a chart like this before. It's a relative humidity cross-section. And what we can view from that is I've put some arrows on there. Anywhere where you see the relative humidity is high and it's kind of strung out through that entire graphic upward vertically, well, that's where we have vertical motion. And thunderstorms are readily available to develop in that. And there's a lot of vertical motion this weekend because the jet stream is unusually strong. Then next week, as the pattern shifts, a ridge starts to build in. We get subsidence or sinking air. That tends to dry it out and suppress thunderstorm activity. And as that happens, the jet stream is going to start changing position a little bit. Here's another interesting looking graphic. This um, not your typical TV graphic for sure. Divergence aloft makes room for thunderstorms. That's a simple way of putting it. Basically what it does is it creates a good environment where thunderstorm updrafts have no problem shooting for the sky. What will happen beyond Sunday and Monday? It's kind of a flip in that. See how green everything is around the south at this point? Uh, then watch this. Well, everything, all that green kind of goes away. What we're seeing is a move away from that extremely sharp drop in the Southern Oscillation Index a few weeks ago, back in May and early June. Uh, I think that's really what sparked a lot of the extremely active weather across the South. This is going to be a bit of a reversal of that, sort of back to more La Nina-like conditions. So El Nino is not taking a break. Uh, it's just that the upper air pattern is changing to look a little bit more like it would in a La Nina summer, which would be a little bit drier, a little bit hotter around central Alabama. Uh, so that is, in a nutshell, why I think the seven-day forecast is going to need to look the way that it does. So we get a better chance of thunderstorms out there Sunday and Monday, and then uh, toward Tuesday, Wednesday of next week, things are going to start getting a little bit drier around here. So let's talk about the short term here. Thursday morning, going to start out really warm, really muggy. Temperatures start in the 70s. We warm toward the low 90s in the afternoon, about 92, 93 in most communities, around 2 to 3 p.m. And then the heat index. Oh, here we go again. Heat index 104, 105, uh, 100, 101. A few stay in the 90s around East Alabama, Sachs, Itala, Leesburg, 98, 99. Uh, there's, there's really no comfort in that because it's hotter than blue blazes. 
here's the one thing that may help us out. Some clouds early in the morning, temperatures in the 70s. We may be a bit slow to get hot. And because of that, it may slow down the progress of the afternoon thunderstorms just a little bit. But I don't think they're going to be denied. Remember, we've got all that divergence a lot. So these storms will have a good environment to grow up in. There's lots of warm, humid air for them to use. Some of them could be severe. We'll be watching carefully uh, Lawrence County to Cullman, Walker, Jefferson, Bibb, Shelby, and Blunt through 4 to 5 p.m. This could become a cluster of storms. It kind of races toward the east at maybe 25, 30 miles per hour racing at that speed. It, it it makes sense if you know how fast the storms ought to be going, probably 15 to 20. So they may come close to doubling the speed if they become one of those big complexes. And, uh, you know, the future cast, the HRRR doesn't really buy into that, but sometimes that certainly can happen. We might end up with something that looks like that, a little complex headed across East Alabama, 7 o'clock tomorrow evening. So I'd say 4 to 8 p.m., Birmingham, Pell City, Anniston, Gadsden, Cullman, Huntsville, Fort Payne, Albertville. We'll have to be on the lookout for that. Maybe a severe storm or two. I don't think it's all that widespread, though. Here's what the situation looked like uh, late Wednesday evening. The jet stream is kind of up here to the north today, but it's got this little kink in it right here, a little short wave that is going to pass through North Alabama tomorrow morning, and then there's going to be another one behind it uh, that comes this direction. Watch the jet stream itself, and I put the, the label on there to show you how fast the wind is. <laughs> This is not very strong, but it doesn't take a very strong wind this time of year to really get things going. This is 10 p.m. Sunday, so we've got a disturbance here. We've got a disturbance here. Both of those have to come through. So I think Sunday night and Monday we'll be dealing with a lot of showers and thunderstorms. Some of the rain may be fairly heavy. So we get scattered daily storms. Some of them could be strong at times. They become most widespread this weekend across Alabama. And you can see where the forecast modeling really picks up on this. Northwest Alabama and then the southern part of the state. So that leaves, oh, you know who, places like Anniston, Gadsden, Birmingham, Pell City, Alabaster, Tuscaloosa, Clanton, Rockford, Alex City, even Montgomery. This part of the state right here may find it hard to get consistent rain, whereas in the Shoals, and say down toward the Mobile County and Clark County and Monroe County, they get quite a bit more. So we'll keep an eye on that situation. This is again, the seven day for central Alabama. I think the forecast goes pretty much region wide. Sunday is the day to expect widespread rain. And we'll kind of link Monday with that too. And then Tuesday and Wednesday of next week start our drier pattern where it gets dry and hot. Humidity may come down a bit. So I don't think we're looking at hundreds, but probably some mid-90s within the next seven days.